We're going to do a quick tutorial on putting an HDRI into a 3ds Max scene. We're going to keep it short and simple. So this is the scene. We've got three cars here. We've got a backplate, which is basically a photo stuck on the back. We've got the road under here, which is part of the photo, which the cars want to sit on. And I've got this plane here, which the plane won't render, but it will capture the shadows and reflections of the cars. So they'll look realistic and it will also reflect back onto them. Um, to a degree, so they will they will capture the color here of this. Um, okay, so to put an HDRI into a scene, very simply, you click here on the Create, you click on Lights, you change this from Photometric to V-Ray if you're using V-Ray, you click V-Ray Light, and you want to go into your top view, and just dra click and drag out a light. Click here on the Modify tab, change this type from Plane to Dome, the multiplier by default is 30. For an HDRI you want 1, so change that to 1. Then you need to choose a texture, so here you will need to click. You can close standards, you come down to V-Ray, you choose V-Ray HDRI. This will open up another dialog, you choose here the HDRI image, or mine is on my desktop. Click on a desktop. Um, HDRI maps, here we go. And then from here you want to select the HDRI you want to use, which is this one. That's now loaded in. Uh, if you want now to one extra point, sorry, one extra point which we can look at here is you can click on this and drag it over into the material editor. You make an instance of it. Let's take a second to load, double click on it. Now here, really, you need to make sure that's set to spherical, which will be by default, so that should be fine. Um, now if you want to have sharper shadows, you need to change this number here, inverse gamma. Just lower it, you can go down to as low as about 0.75. Um, and that will, if you go lower, you can sometimes get odd, odd artifacts happening, because what it does is it also changes the contrast, so, and changes the, the colors in the image so your blues are going to become bluer and deeper and your lights are going to become lighter and more yellow and orange so it can also change the color uh, of the image so you don't really want to be going too far below 0.75 um, for this it's fine at one uh, I've edited this HDRI actually in Photoshop to make it work nicely and we can show you how to do that in another tutorial one extra point here I forgot earlier when doing this is uh, you've got the overall multiplier and the render multiplier here uh, so you, if the V-Ray light is too bright, uh, you know, it's just blowing everything out. Also, come in here and reduce these, um, you know, to get the light to the correct uh, intensity that you need. Try lowering and raising these values. For for this HDRI, this is working. This does not always work. Um, and then also check your camera settings. Just come in here. And... Make sure these are set ha as similar to a camera that you would use. So in this case, I'm looking at a camera outside, uh, what the settings would be. So the aperture is set at 5.6. Um, this is set to frames, and this is set to manual 200 ISO. So this seems to be working really well. Oh, normally I change this actually to seconds, and then, sorry, uh, tenths of seconds, and then change this to however long I want the shutter, shutter to be open. Um, this is one one thousandth of a second. So if you change it down, one one hundredth of a second. Maybe you want one thirtieth of a second. So the lower you get down, the closer it gets to one something of a second. But that's it. That's the simplicity of putting an HDRI into any scene. You can use it for interiors where you have lights coming in through the windows. You can use it for um, Arch Viz, which we use it for all the time at work, um, or you can use it for a scene like this. The only other thing you need to pay attention to on this is the rotation here, um, because the light, normally by default, all the light is coming from, well, the east. So any HDRI I put in, light comes in this way. So if you look at your scene, is that the way you want light coming? Um, of course, it depends where the sun is, but most people put the sun there. So then you've got to say, well, do you want the light coming from this way? In which case you need to rotate it 90 degrees. Or do you want it coming from here? So then rotate it 180. 
uh, or where do you want it? You have to work it out and decide. Uh, in this, I think <laughs> 289 works nicely. Um, I'm here I've got to look at the back plane, I've got to look at the shadows being created here on all of these different items, this tree, the, this um, green shrub and stuff like that. Uh, also in this, you don't always have to do it, but in this, when I load it in, it flips because I've got a backplate here, so the image is actually flipped. So I have to flip it horizontally to get it so the image is the right way around. Um, the other things, if you are using a backplate like I'm here, you click invisible. If you want to see the HDRI in the scene, don't click invisible. Um, and then you've got to think, is this HDRI, do you want to see this in reflections? Do you want to see this in the windows of your house? Do you want to see this in the, in the reflections on, on the vehicle or not? If you do leave that on, if you don't, because maybe you're using a completely different HDRI, maybe you're using an HDRI which was on a beach, and now you're taking, you know, you've got a backplate of of land and grass, so in which case turn off effect reflections so you don't get these reflections, the the sun and the beach reflections in everything. Okay, um, another couple of tips. Go into your render settings. And in your render settings, um, click on environment. When you have the look at the environment here, uh, make sure this GI environment is turned off. Uh, normally I turn it on and make it black. And then after it's made black, I then turn it off. Uh, I don't know if you have to make it black, but that's what I always do. Have GI environment off and reflection refraction environment unticked. Um, because this will be used for refraction. So we want to see this background through the car. So if you click that on, you're going to see black where the windows are. The refraction is going to be black. So make sure that's off, and you can see the HDRI or, or the backplate through the refractions uh, and reflection. If, for whatever reason, you're using an HDRI here, sometimes you'll just get black. And you'll have the HDRI, and the, the window and glass is black. You can't see through it. So what you want to do is you can just drag this. Well, make sure you turn, it, turn this on check on map. You can select your light, you can do it from here or you can do it from the material editor. But you can just click and drag it across and then select instance and that now will be the same image that you're using in the HDRI which will then be in reflection and refraction so that will make sure that the image you can see through the glass is the correct image. In this case I'm leaving it like this and I want to see the back plate. Let's do a quick render. And that's the render on low settings. And that's it, that's the simplicity of putting an HDRI light into any 3DS Max scene.